Sairam to all of you. Welcome to your new phase of study of chemistry in an altogether new section of senior secondary under the NIOS board. Something new that you come across in our day to day life where study of chemistry was specifically in tune with your general study of sciences till now. Generally, you did not segregate chemistry as a subject in your studies. But henceforth, the vast study of sciences are being further classified mainly into physics, chemistry, biology and there are very much other allied subjects which have been present. So in the study of chemistry, a long run that you are going to have, you will be studying various aspects of elements, compounds, what are the ways that many things are prepared as such either naturally or artificially. So as an introductory part to this, we are just going to see where this chemistry is going to help us in our day to day lives, where it is going to run in with many of the processes that we employ in our day to day lives. So the first chapter that you come across in this is atoms, molecules and chemical arithmetic. So you are going to come across a lot of mathematical problems also in the very first chapter because the moment you have to study basics, the basement has to be stronger and scientific studies, a proper basement can be given with the support of mathematics. So first up in this chapter, you are just going to see about what is this atoms, molecules and all. I am sure you have heard of this in your earlier classes in tits and bits. But now it is going to be a strong basic study of these compounds. So let's see what is all this uh, chemical study is all about. So as an introductory aspect here, this is nothing but the subject deals with matter and the changes that it undergoes. So generally any compound that we have in this world, matter and energy are quite interrelatable. We have come across these equations of E is equal to mc square. So there we understand that the matter keeps on changing into energy and that energy can be studied and determined by various chemical methods. So in this general study of chemistry, we are going to study about this matter and it has a very much strong role in many aspects of our life. For example, they have mentioned here health, medicine, energy and environment, food. This is one important thing because many of us do come from agricultural backgrounds or even our very sustenance is based on agriculture. Do we use chemistry in agriculture? Well, definitely if you go across to your fields, you will find that people use fertilizers. People tend to use various methodologies and instrumentations for plowing, sowing and many other process. So in every composite aspects of this chemistry takes part in it. Then basically chemistry is a branch of science that studies about composition, properties and interaction of matter. This is a broad definition of chemistry but then once you go into the study of chemistries, you find many more aspects being present there. So with this broad definition, we are going to start the study of chemistry and then go in deeper and deeper. In chemical industries, that's a very important component because generally preparatives which are there rely on a lot of chemicals. We use certain sweaters and all in uh, cool conditions, all that fur and all which is there, chemically they are interlinked with each other. So you find this application of chemicals and fertilizers, then salts, dyes, dyes is something that we use as coloring matter, be it for hairs or general clothing. Also, when you find colors, it is basically by the use of those dyes. Polymers, this is something that we are going to study specifically. Soaps and detergents, drugs. Now drugs doesn't essentially mean in a negative aspect. It so happens that the moment we hear drug, we always feel something that we should not hear of or we should not be seeing towards it because our ideology of drug straight away goes to heroin and cocaine. No, anything that can treat you, whatever a doctor use is nothing but a drug. It is just that he puts it up in controlled dosages. When you are addicted to the, these type of drugs, that is when problem starts. But otherwise, for your treatment, drugs is what 
is going to help you then we have metals alloys some of this aspect you already studied in your earlier classes uh, but uh, a more uh, strategic study in the form of metallurgy we are going to study here and then about various uh, organic and inorganic compounds all this together bring about a healthy economy for a country because anything that we work upon it is basically to see to it that how it supports human life and all these aspects definitely do support the human life which is present so having seen many of these uh, applications in general let's now see some things uh, in practical analysis and have a little deeper research about this so this chemistry we tend to find it in uh, many of these aspects say health and medicine energy environment materials and technology and food and agriculture all those applications which i happen to convey in the earlier part they are just made up here into particular points as such so that we can study them step by step a small diagrammatic representation here about how various tablets are made basically it is all about chemicals it is just chemicals where they are intermixed with proper proportion so that it helps the functioning of your body so let us see certain uh, applicative parts of each and every aspect that we have discussed the first up we shall see about uh, health and medicine now it so happens that the moment you have to prepare a medicine what is present inside medicine it is just a combination of chemicals any medicine you take up you please find out a bottle where you have syrups you have this uh, tubes say like ointments you have anything you that that you find you will find some compositions being written there benzoic acid or naphthalene any such compositions will be written so what you can understand is that this field of medicinal sciences which is there the base of that medicinal sciences lies in the chemical compounds which are being present so therefore in the study of medicine this is very important and especially in case of infectious diseases we also have very contaminating diseases presently we are running through covid so what is that which has been tried to work out against these type of infectious diseases is certain types of chemicals which can combat these viruses so many disorders also which are there so this is basically a gene therapy therapy indicates treatment and genes what are these genes in biology you must have studied that these are the materials which get transferred from one generation to another another generation and if some issues are there say for example somebody was suspect now generally you find that if it is in heredity they tend to have very high power now that is because that same gene is getting transferred again and again to the next generation so can you treat it in any way yeah definitely so this is what this gene therapy and all which is there where they understand the chemical compositions which are there and that is how for doctors this chemical knowledge basic chemical knowledge becomes very important and then we have many other uh, effects say like uh, cancer treatments and aids and all all this are now being controlled to a large extent by the usage of drugs you must have heard of polio even today there are government agencies which uh, have which uh, run this polio days and all and uh, they try to reach out to all small children to administer this polio drops once upon a time polio was a very infectious disease it has killed a lot of our population but today you hardly hear anybody having this polio disease no doubt there may be some but very very rarely now that is because proper chemicals have been developed in proper proportion to combat these type of diseases maybe in coming times if covid can have a proper set of chemicals in proper proportions naturally you will not hear ab even about this virus also so this is how to combat all these uh, conditions in the medical field understanding of chemistry and its chemical composition is very important so this was about the application of chemistry in uh, health and medicine moving on energy and uh, environment as i've already conveyed energy has relationship with the matter and mass that has been present so generally we use this energy from various sources one is the thermal energy thermal therm means the heat that has been produced so we have many thermal power plants say like in raichur and all similarly we have nuclear power plants wherein in karnataka we have it at kaiga so like this variable energy sources can be utilized to generate energy one important source that we tend to find is uh, sunlight the solar energy 
where a lot of research is being done on that so that if we are able to use sunlight and the solar energy uh, to a large extent, a lot of our energy problems can be solved. I'm sure you are aware of the solar cells that are being generated. Those are nothing but the silicon cells which are compacted with proper proportions which can be used for this conversion of uh, sunlight into photovoltaic cells. The other aspect was the nuclear fission which I happened to mention about Kaiga. The only problem is that uh, this reaction if at all is uncontrolled can be very dangerous to the surrounding. Now you must have heard about Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 during the second world war. What was that bomb which was been put up? No doubt you hear that it was a nuclear bomb. So what is the difference between that and uh, something that we have it at say Kaiga? It's exactly the same. The reaction is exactly the same. But what differs is at a nuclear power plant, say for example in Kaiga, the reaction is done in a controlled manner. Only three neutrons are being projected in that case. But when you have to make it into a nuclear bomb, the same thing when you do it in uncontrolled fashion, it becomes a bomb and it destroys a large space that has been present around that. So there is a little bit of hazard about this nuclear fission and then all this waste which are there, radioactive waste, you will have to discard that. So how do you discard it? Whether it will affect the people around. So there are some concerns. So no doubt scientists are working on that and with time, we can be assured that there could be good results regarding usage of nuclear fission reactions. So this was about another set of application. The other parts are, uh, the, it improves the quality of environment also because nowadays once you use this lead petrol and all, if you remember earlier the petrol that we were using was lead petrol. Now why did people go to lead petrol? Because they realized that the machine functioning becomes very good. But the problem was it was affecting the environment. So that is why now you have this unleaded petrol which we use it and it's compulsory now. Reason being environment is also equally important. So that is why that ban has been put up in this lead petrol which we were using earlier. Disadvantage of burning fossil fuels because these fossil fuels they are not everlasting so they may get uh, emptied of, uh, when we use it for a longer amount of time and then whatever the waste they produce they also cause this greenhouse effect and they affect the atmosphere which has been present so now our ideology or the science and technology is taking us towards a place where we reduce our dependencies on these things and rather improve our dependency on say renewable sources say like solar energy so this is about the relation of chemistry with the energy and uh, environment and as conveyed more and more of solar or electric systems if we can bring out that way we will be able to control the effects that it, it is having on the environment because you cannot deny a particular process that is happening if you are establishing an industry it is damn sure that it will be giving out a lot of waste so will you close an industry no it will totally destroy the country's economy. So industry has to run, but if you can have this electric power system, solar power systems, have a proper waste management, things can be worked out in a better way. So this was about the energy and uh, environment and then materials and technology. So this is about how technology is helping in day-to-day -day improvement of life on earth. And we are uh, seeing it everywhere that uh, technology is reaching out to every nook and corner of the world you are able to see these classes through the support of technology but at the same time as Swami always tells it is also technology so here what is more important is what we try to get out of that and we see that there are many examples of materials which can be used as technical purposes we have polymers say like rubbers this is obtained from the rubber plant which is there, ceramics, cookwares, then liquid crystals. All this have a lot of research potential that is uh, working out. We have something called as superconductors also. Now what is this uh, superconductors is they don't have any resistance. But the only problem is we don't have superconductors at the room temperature. Well, what does this mean is suppose if you have a superconductor at room temperature, you need not switch on a light and switch off a light as such. You don't need to supply any energy or have an electrical circuit. It will just keep glowing. That is what is superconductor because there is no resistance at all. What is resistance? Something which you block. 
So here, if there is no resistance, it can work out. But then the superconductors that we have today are running at temperatures as low as 150 Kelvin. So we need something that can happen at room temperature. So these are certain materials which are uh, supporting the usage of uh, chemistry in day-to-day -day life, food and agriculture, as it has been told. So one thing is how do we produce better yield, better crop yield. The other one is how don't we mix or contaminate it with too many chemicals. So if you put too many chemicals, finally it is going to affect you itself because you are the one who is going to consume these electric, uh, this uh, agricultural products. So therefore, it is very important that we see about the richness of the soil, then the insects and diseases which uh, affect these crops that has to be controlled in their cases. Irrigation is definitely one thing because pure water has to be supplied to that and that is how scientists nowadays are trying to work out on various methodologies so that over a period of time we are able to generate those processes where we can get pure crop yields, high crop yields with lesser utility of chemicals as such. So these are various uh, general utilities in chemistry as I happen to convey. This was just an introductory part and slowly henceforth we will see a lot of chemical aspects in these parts. Thank you. Sairam.